currently in the waters just off Heard Island. Heard Island is just to my right here. Um, we're in very shallow waters, about 100 meters deep. For the past two weeks, we've been surveying waters around the Kuguelen Plateau um, with the hypothesis that this area is iron rich. Um, further north, we found some very interesting results where the iron has been taken up by the biology for very early in this season and it's now quite low. But as we approach these waters near Heard and McDonald Island, we found elevated levels of iron particularly near McDonald, which is a volcanic island. Um, we've seen higher levels in the water column. We believe the iron is coming from the volcanic ash um, out of the erupting volcano, both above sea and below sea level. And we've now moved to Heard Island where we have some active glaciers. And we're gonna sample near these glaciers to look at the iron that's delivered from those glaciers because um, we can see um, with our cameras and our binoculars that there's ash mixed into those um, glass glacial waters mixing into the ocean around us. We know that the ocean is iron limited, it's essentially anemic, there is, isn't enough iron for plant growth, but in this region of the Southern Ocean, um, we do see large phytoplankton blooms, um, so it's, the ecosystems here are quite healthy. What we don't know is um, why they are healthy here and where the iron is coming from to stimulate those blooms. Um, we hypothesize that it's partly delivered by submarine volcanoes, hydrothermal vents um, in these waters and around these islands, and that's why we're here to test. And if that's the case, this has uh, broad implications for the health and ecosystem vitality of the Southern Ocean. The TMR is a trace metal rosette. Um, this is similar to a CTD unit, which is used for physical oceanography, but our unit has been specially designed to measure very low concentrations of trace elements in the ocean. So it's designed with only plastics um, in its manufactured materials, some titanium, but no other metallic parts. That we deploy that to a set depth, which we choose from looking at the vertical structure of the water column. And then we pre-trip it at 12 depths as it's coming up in the water column to fire and close the Niskin bottles um, at those selected depths. Um, that gives us a, an idea of how iron concentration has changed through the water column, how they may be delivered at the surface, perhaps for, for, from volcanic smoke from the volcanic islands around us, or at depth through hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. We have a very experienced crew here, both the scientists and the people on board the research vessel, but we're working in the Southern Ocean. It's the uh, windiest, wildest place on Earth to work in, in all the Earth's ocean. So we have to deploy in very difficult conditions. Um, the ship's able to hold its course in 30 and 35 knot winds, um, but we have to be very careful when we deploy the system so we don't um, lose the, uh, well, the rosette doesn't swing and hit the ship. And we try to keep a straight wire angle at all times. Um, and then when we recover it again, we're offering recovery in very strong winds. So again, it's a very careful operation to time when we bring it out of the water, land it on the deck, and then securely um, um, uh, stow it away in our trace metal clean container. So we take samples from the ocean, we bring them to the surface of the ocean, move them into a clean air environment. Those samples are rapidly processed, they're filtered. The samples are then brought up into this facility here. This is an analytical facility. Um, we make me various measurements of trace elements in the ocean around us, and we make those in near real time to provide our data.